No sign. Um, Professor Burns, I, I just didn't get your take home message about lying. Speak a little louder. Yeah, your take home message about lying it was okay when Roosevelt lied. It wasn't okay when Clinton lied. So, well, what's the take home message? The stakes involved. Stakes. So it's okay to lie about big things, but not about Trump. In fighting okay. Hitlerism as against worrying about Clinton's infidelity. I have a question, I remark in that sense, from a world point of view. For the world, this um, issue of Clinton was about six months to a year that America wasted doing a witch hunt. It's not about lying, not about the space. It's about the time where America's going to use its time more effective. I wonder what you can say about this. Jim, did you have a question? Uh, I think it was probably addressed to you, Jim, since you were talking about Clinton. I'm sorry, we're here to repeat that. We have a problem up here. I have, I'm a little deaf, and I got shingles. Okay. Anybody who knows shingles knows I'm a hero. A very... <laughs> well, a very, a very succinct and quick question, if, if you would, please. The world sees that differently. Um, there were like six months to a year that America used on a witch hunt, and the time could have been used more effective. What are your comments? Well, just that it's another example to me of the relative importance of these deeds that I'm talking about. And also, attitudes change, of course, very dramatically. But coming back to the transparency issue, one of the remarkable things about the Clinton episode, it was so transparent, eventually, uh, which I think is a virtue. But in terms of what I'm concerned about, what happens in the world as a whole, it just doesn't seem to me to be that important. Yes, one more question over there, and then we'd like to spend. Um, Could you introduce yourself, please? My name is Bob Massey. I'm from an organization called Ceres. Uh, President Bush is operating one of the least transparent, most opaque uh, presidencies in recent memory. Do you believe he is justified in concealing so many things from the American people on the grounds that he's pursuing a greater good? Well, let me broaden that question out a bit uh, to a dialogue I had with David Bergen uh, in his class the other day, where we were talking about the Bush administration, and I was talking about leadership, we both were. And he asked me, well, how do you feel about Bush's leadership? I said, I think it's terrific. He was appalled. I think Bush is showing what can be done, putting aside what he's doing, he is showing what can be done in a unique period in American history, at least in this century, past century, where there is that much unity uh, between uh, the President and Congress and evidently the Supreme Court. The Democrats, for years, always had a terrific excuse. The liberal Democrats could always say that the Southern Democrats were deserting them. They tried to do great things, but they couldn't get the votes. A month before Kennedy's assassination, I just ran across this doing research at the JFK Library. A month before he was assassinated, he called in a group of his friends at Congress. And he said to them, what has happened to my program? What has happened to my program? We all know now that what had happened to his program was that it was simply not passed. So, The thing I like about the Bush leadership is that we hold him completely responsible. He has no excuse. He is one of things. And since, to my mind, accountability is one of the crucial aspects of the kind of thing that Warren Bennis is interested in, accountability, responsibility, and to some extent transparency, because so much of these awful things that I think the administration is doing are 
tremendously humbled because they're proud of it. So much more to be said about the Bush, but uh, so uh, how did we end this? Uh, we, we ended it with, a, with an agreement that uh, Democrats should not adopt Republican ideas. I'm absolutely against any kind of centrism, and I would hold this more against Clinton than his infidelity. Transactional leadership beyond what should have been done. That the Democrats ought to learn from the Republicans about how to mobilize the vote. And I wish we had more time for that because, to my mind, of all the unhappy aspects of American politics, the 40 or 45 percent of the people who, after all the hullabaloo of these elections, do not vote. That's one reason Barbara Kellerman and I are so interested in followership, because we want to turn these, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, we want to turn the <coughs> non-voters into active followers who someday will become leaders. Can I ask that you give Warren Bennis and James McGregor Burns no less than a standing ovation. <laughs> 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 <laughs>